Good afternoon, YouTube, BookTube, the whole wide world, the planet Earth. This is Johnny, time to make a video. It is a Monday afternoon here in West Southwest Michigan. It is uh, October the 29th, 2018. It is 2.02 in the afternoon. It is a... Uh, Cloudy, damp, cold, late, well, maybe, I don't know what this is. I suppose it's just an autumn day, autumn afternoon on Monday. So, I noticed that in my YouTube site, I haven't made a video since, I think, Friday. It could have been Saturday, I don't remember. I'm home from the Book Nook, the library used bookstore. I got home around 1 o'clock. My wife was leaving to go to the hospital once again to visit her brother, her older brother, who's in the hospital, recovering from hip surgery and other, other medical problems. So when I got home, I ate lunch, and I cataloged the books I got at the Book Nook. Today, uh, well, before I, I just thought I'd just show you these books. My wife wanted me to find these two novels for her. She gave me a list before I left for the book nook. I just want to show you what she will be reading when she goes on her trip to Denver next week. The Curious Charms of Author Pepper by, I can't pronounce it, Pe Pe Era Patrick? She wanted this. I don't I don't know what it's about. But she had me look for this and then she wanted me to look for this Childberry Ladies Choir by Jennifer Ryan. So these are the books that my wife wanted me to look for her. That's what kind of stuff she reads. And when I was looking around, I I found this book check out of the library and I read this when I was at the book nook this morning. E Europia, How Europe Shaped the Modern World by Julio Crispo McLanlin. And so I was reading that at the book nook today. What I read this morning, this morning I had to get up really early and take uh, my wife's car to the down the street to Maple Auto, Maplewood Auto to get the oil change in her car. And I read this while waiting this morning, The Rise of Reform System, Intellectual Heritage of William Ames by Jan Van Vanette. And when I got home, before I went to the book nook, I read Imitating God and Christ, Recapturing a Biblical Pattern by Jason B. Hood. I've been reading this and off, off and on for a while. I was down the lower level this morning getting out dry clothes out of the dryer and I just grabbed it. I don't know, right? Like I said, I, I don't know what to get into as far as Christian reading in the morning. I'm kind of like been reading the same thing for months. But um, I do have my eye on this one Christian book that I might order today. But I'm not sure because I got tons of stuff to read down the lower level, Christian books, secular books. So I don't know, I can, can I really justify it? Plus I have a commentary, one of those Reformation commentaries series on the Psalms coming, and I have another book coming on the nature of good and evil from a Christian perspective, something like that. So I don't know. So, uh, like I, I've said over the weekend, I watch a lot of college football and then I watch professional football. And on Sundays, I look through the New York Times newspaper. And I I also watch a lot, of, not a lot, but I do watch lectures on YouTube, Christian lectures, different things. I watch BookTube. I watch a lot of music videos. I listen to music, music reviews on metal metal albums and things like that and um, but I did read over the weekend I read from these two books 
The Origins of Consciousness and the Breakdown of the Bis Bicameral Mind by Julian Janus. Uh, I've had this, I don't know, for a couple of years, and I just get it out once in a while, and I just read. I just read it for... I was reading it while I was watching football during, you know, just... I've read it. I've read through parts of it the last couple of years. And then I've been... I read yesterday during Sunday... Revenge of Geography, What the Map Tells Us About Coming Conflicts in the Battle Against Fate by Robert D. Kaplan. So I read these off and on throughout the day, month, Saturday and Sunday. I read this throughout the day Saturday, and I read this throughout the day Sunday when I wasn't looking at the New York Times uh, newspaper. I got these books at the book nook today. Well, I showed you... I got a book by this Peter Sess on the, called The Wall, and I found another one, The Conference of the Birds, which uh, I'm not really sure what it's about. Uh, Peter Sess, award-winning author and illustrator, breathes new life into the classic 12th century Persian epic poem, The Conference of the Birds, revealing its profound lessons. So that's what it's about. It's, fun, it's just like a... I don't know, it was only a dollar, and I had the one on the wall, and I like his drawings, um, different drawings, um, so I, kind of a cool book, and then I found this book today at the Book Nook that I bought for two dollars. I have three other books by this guy. Uh, I just bought, well, no, Steve Donahue sent me a book a while back that he wrote on Eisenhower. But this is by William I. Hitchcock, The Bitter Road to Freedom, The New History of Liberation of Europe. The Bitter Road to Freedom, The Human Cost of Allied Victory in the World War II Europe by William I. Hitchcock. I have other books. Uh, I think he did a book on FDR and the and the New Deal, and I have another book by him, but the road, the bitter, the bitter road to freedom, Pulitzer Prize finalists, and then I collect books on uh, Antarctica. I don't know. I'm just kind of fascinated with the whole continent. This is called Empire of Antar Antarctica: Ice, Silence, and Emperor Penguins. Uh, I, I looked through this. I was at the book nook, and I put it aside last week. And, you know, it just it, it's just like a memoir about exploration in Antarctica, which always kinds of is kind of interests me. And reading about emperor penguins and things like that looked very interesting. And then I put this book aside a couple of weeks ago at the book nook, the halls of Montezuma's. The Mexican War and the American Imagination by Robert W. Janison. I like reading about American history, and I don't know much about the, the Mexican War in this early part of around 1849 of American history. And then I picked up A Disease in the Public Mind, A New Understanding of Why We Fought the Civil War by Thomas Fleming, I have his other book, The Intimate Lives of the Founding Fathers, by him. I collect books on the Civil War. I mentioned that. And then I found uh, they're going through the library, uh, taking out books out of circulation, and I was in the back room, and the woman who's in charge of doing that, the, the book nook, I, she was pulling out books on music, and I saw this uh, this biography. Uh, it's called "Begin Again: A Biography of John Cage" by Kenneth Silverman. I read this. I read this when this came out. New. For, I got checked out of the library, and I read it. Yeah, it came out in 2010, and I really enjoyed when I read this. I, I have two other biographies by Kenneth Silverman. He wrote a really great commentary called uh, The Life and Times of Cotton Mather and he also wrote 
uh, a biography on Edgar Allan Poe, Mournful and Never-Ending Remembrance. Uh, so, yeah. Other books I don't know. The Culture History of American Revolution, The Accursed Life of Samuel F. B. Morse. But, so I was kind of pleased to get a copy of this because I read this oh, a while back. And I checked, like I said, I checked it out of the library and I read it and I really enjoyed it. So it's a biography of John Cage, uh, who was one of the, the modern composers, you know, very famous 20th century modern composer, inventor, poet, musician. It's really good. I really enjoyed it when I read this. So that's what I got out of the book nook. That's what I've been reading. And uh, I got a book coming in the mail tomorrow. So, so yeah, I started reading Europia. I don't know. I got checked out of the library. I'll probably read this. It's kind of like I look at myself like I'm a traveler going through world history. I read a little bit about European history and then I read a little bit about American history and then I look at a certain period of American history like the early republic or then I look at something that took place in the Second World War or then I look at world the whole history of the world like geography you know, I'm always just, or then I read biblical history, history of Israel, history of the New Testament. I'm always looking at my own history, of my own little span of time, this little dot, this little flash of time that I have on this earth to prepare for the eternal state. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I've always been reading, I've been reading history, um, At least 50 years. <laughs> yeah. I've always been interested in history. I mean, I've always kind of, I was always kind of um, surprised when people would say, history is boring. I don't like reading history. Well, I've always found history. Even when I was a kid, I always found it. I remember when I, we lived, when I was growing up as a boy, one time when I was in elementary school, we went to Jamestown there in Virginia. We went to Williamsburg. I always and I always remember that when our kids got older. One time we went to Williamsburg and we went to Jamestown when they were like, oh, I don't know, probably elementary school. But I always find history fascinating. Not only the history of of like England or United States, but the history of people, biographies, like the history of John Cage. Just, it's really, I just like reading history, biographies, letters, memoirs. It's just, I've always have since I can remember. And uh, so that's what my Monday Reads is. Uh, like I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't really know what I'm going to do the rest of the day. Uh, when I get around 2.15 in the afternoon, I kind of kind of start I go into a lull. I just want to close my eyes and sleep. So I might do that. I did get myself a, a cup of coffee. I cataloged these books I got today in my library thing, Book Mountain. And yeah. In my diary, I'm on page 898 right now. 898. I probably will hit I should hit next month, by the end of the month, at least around 1,000. <laughs> I should hit around 1,000, at close to it by the end of November. Because I usually write around, you know, 1,000 pages. Not much else going on. We had a quiet weekend. I watched football last night. Our oldest son invited us over for dinner, so Karen and I went over there around 4 o'clock, had time with Josie Joy and little Coralie, and had a great meal, good time talking to Caleb and Emily, and uh, 
watch some football. I think we were watching. It was the Packers and the Rams. It was a good game. Caleb has a giant TV screen compared to our TV screen. So it was kind of interesting watching such a huge screen, watching the football game. So I'll stop my rambling. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you have a good new week. I thank you for the comments and I thank you for subscribing. And I do, I don't know, my wife doesn't work tonight, but tomorrow night she goes back to work and I might do to be read. I have a pile of books I could show there in the living room, so I might do that. So I'll sign off. Until next time, bye.